Hello and welcome to Acupressure Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining. I'm Alexa Halsey of Encircle Acupuncture in Nashville and I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about acupressure and the immune system. And so I'm going to guide you through some acupressure techniques to strengthen your immune system, which we all need right now. So thanks for joining. I'm just going to go ahead and start talking. Um, if you join and if you're having trouble hearing me, just say so in the comments. Um, and if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments as well. And I will be happy to answer any of your questions as I go. So um, again, thanks for joining Acupressure Wednesday. We're going to be doing acupressure for the immune system today. You're going to feel great afterwards. So let's get started. Um, I like to start with uh, just a few quiet breaths. Um, so everybody just take a comfortable seat and you want to sit um, with your feet resting on the floor. If you need some support for your lower back, that's totally fine. Or you can just sit um, on your sits bones, feet hip width apart on the floor and uh, just breathe comfortably for a few breaths and you can um, keep your eyes open if you like or close your eyes, uh, whatever's comfortable for you. And just tune into your body and listen to your body and see if your body's trying to tell you anything today. So just take some breaths. Notice if you're feeling any muscle tension anywhere in your body, maybe in your neck and shoulders, if you've been sitting at the computer, maybe in your lower back, um, maybe you've got a headache if you've been looking at a screen. And just take note of that, because we'll check back in at the end of the session and see if we feel any changes. So just see if your body wants you to notice anything that's going on. Just a couple more breaths. If you have a preferred breathing technique, you can use that or just breathe comfortably. Just listen to your body. All right. So my body's feeling pretty good today, but feeling a little tension in sort of my chest, upper chest and upper back area. So uh, today's session is going to help that. Um, next, we're going to do a short gathering exercise. This is going to make our acupressure uh, uh, session more productive because we're going to be gathering in some chi from the environment around us and then using that chi from our environment to uh, promote the movement of chi in our bodies. So with this gathering exercise, you can either do that seated or standing. So I'm going to stand up. And you can too, or you can stay seated, whatever's comfortable for you. Just move my chair out of the way for a second. And if you're standing, you want to stand with your feet about hip width apart and have a little bend in your knees. Um, you don't want to lock your knees. Uh, if you're sitting, feet about hip width apart. And you're just going to um, slowly raise your arms overhead with your palms up while you're inhaling. And then as you exhale, you're gonna lower your arms, palms down, and then um, just bring your palms to rest on your lower abdomen. So well, let's do this a few more times. Inhale as you raise your arms, palms up. Exhale as you lower palms down to rest on your abdomen. And you want to think about gathering in the chi from your environment that's all around you and bringing it into your body. And just gather as much chi as you need. There's plenty to go around for everyone. So don't worry about taking too much. And let's just do that one more time. So we have some nice fresh chi from our environment that we're gonna use in today's session. And then we're just going to rub our hands together vigorously 
Because all that chi we just gathered, we're now going to um, use our hands to move that throughout our bodies. So we want a lot of chi flow to our hands and our fingertips. All right, my hands are getting nice and warm. Yours should be too. All right, here we go. And my hands are nice and red too. That means we got a lot of circulation, so that's good. Okay, so acupressure for the immune system. So um, most people, when they think about the immune system, they think about um, fighting colds and flus um, and things like that. And, um, and they think about um, fighting off something external. We wanna keep our bodies strong so that invading pathogens don't make us sick. Um, so that's part of what we're doing today. But also in traditional Chinese medicine, the, um, the immune system has an internal component as well. And in fact, modern research has, um, has really um, come to show that that, that is true. Um, so um, the, in, the immune system isn't just about fighting off invading pathogens, it's also about keeping a healthy internal ecosystem so that your body is strong enough to mount a defense in, in case there is something from the outside that's trying to invade. Um, so it's like keeping a strong external barrier, but also keeping you balanced and strong internally. And we're gonna focus on a few different areas um, with acupressure today, um, a few different points to keep all of those areas of the immune system strong. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the lungs are considered the first line of defense um, and so we're going to start with a point on the lung channel to really promote healthy lung function. So this first point that we're going to do is lung one. It's the first point on the lung channel. The lung channel begins internally um, in the lungs and then it's the first point is on the side of the chest. So the way that you find lung one is you're going to actually first find lung two. So you're going to find your clavicle and follow your clavicle out until it hits your deltoid muscle here. Um, so right about there is lung two, and then lung one is just a little bit below that, okay? Now, feel, apply some pressure at both of these points. On some people, lung two is more sensitive, and on some people, lung one is more sensitive. You can really do either one, um, I tend to use lung one more and it's definitely more sensitive on me, um, but on you, lung two might be more tender. So if that's the case, then you can use lung two. I'm going to use lung one on myself and let's find that on the other side too. All the points we're using today are bilateral. They're on both sides of the body. So again, you're going to find your clavicle and just trace your finger on the underside of your clavicle until you hit the deltoid muscle right here. There's a depression there. That's lung two. <clears throat> you can use that point or also go try going just a little bit below there and feel lung one and feel for what's more tender. They might not be the same on both sides. So on me, lung two is more tender on this side and uh, lung one is more tender on this side. As you press and feel these points, your skin is going to become red. That's totally normal uh, because you're activating chi flow there. So that's fine. So you're gonna do either lung one or lung two, depending on how your body is responding. You wanna choose the most tender point. Now the way that I like to apply acupressure at these points, I like to just take my thumbs and just kinda, just kinda dig them in there. And while you're doing that, it's great to take some, some deep breaths. So I'm gonna do that for just a second. And I've got my thumbs here at lung one or lung two, whichever is more tender on you. You could even use like the flat part of your thumb and kind of get two points in one. That's an even more effective way to do it. You can rub in circles if you like, or just apply some pressure without rubbing circles, whatever feels best for your body. So the lungs in traditional Chinese medicine are considered our first line of defense against invading pathogens. The lungs have the most interchange with the outside world because we're constantly taking in chi from the outside 
through our lungs. So the lungs get exposed to external pathogens much more, um, much more than any, any other organ. So it's good to give the lungs a lot of attention when we are uh, working on our immune system. The lungs are considered the delicate organ for that reason, because, um, because they've got, uh, again, a lot of interchange with the outside world and they're the most affected by external pathogens. And so that's why um, uh, so many diseases that we see that come from, that are infectious in nature, affect the lungs. Colds and flus affect the lungs because that's the first organ to be targeted by a pathogen invading from the outside. Um, so, uh, so we gotta take care of our lungs when we're working on the immune system. It's really important. Um, also, this time of year, autumn, is the, t the season associated with the lungs. So um, each of the seasons has a corresponding element and organ, and the autumn is, is associated with the metal element and the lungs. So the lungs can get particularly taxed during the autumn. So we really wanna pay attention to our lungs at this time of year. Um, so this point, these points that we're doing, lung one and two, they clear excess pathogens from the lungs and they help to disseminate and disperse lung chi. So that's really the function is, of the lungs. We call it D and D, uh, disseminate and descend, sorry, descend and disperse. And so um, this point uh, helps the lungs in that function um, and it strengthens the lungs. So... This is a great place to start when we're working on the immune system. So that's lung one and two. Nice and red there on me, and it should be on you as well. That's good. Okay, so we've done some work on our lungs, and now we're gonna work on what we call Wei Qi. So Qi in Chinese medicine is our vital energy, it's our life force, it's what powers all of our metabolic processes, and there are all different kinds of Qi in the body. When we think about the immune system, we're really thinking about two kinds of qi. One is called wei qi, which is our defensive qi, which circulates on the exterior of the body. And then the other type of qi is what we call ying qi, which circulates interior. And we have to work on both of these to strengthen the immune system. So we're gonna start with wei qi. That's the qi that circulates on the exterior. This is the qi that fights off invading pathogens. So. The first point we're gonna do for Wei Qi is large intestine four. It's a really popular acupuncture point. I've talked about it a lot. If you've had acupuncture, you've probably uh, had a needle at this point. It's a great place to do acupressure as well. So large intestine four, many people are familiar. It's located in the fleshy area between the thumb and the forefinger. This point is contraindicated for acupuncture in pregnancy. So if you're pregnant, just skip this point. You can keep doing some pressure at lung one or two while I'm talking about large intestine four. And you can feel around in this fleshy area to find a sensitive spot. Um, also, you can find the true textbook definition of the point by squeezing the thumb and the forefinger finger together and there at the height is where this point is located. But just feel around for what's tender. And you wanna do this on both sides. You can just squeeze with your thumb and your forefinger, or you can rub it in circles, whatever feels good, uh, whatever feels like your body is responding to. So this point, large intestine four, helps to regulate and circulate the Wei Qi. Large intestine four in general is a very strongly moving point. It moves Qi anywhere in the body it's a great point for pain. Anytime there's stagnation, we do large intestine four. And so we wanna make sure that our Wei Qi is circulating through the whole body and not getting stagnant. And so large intestine four helps to do this. It helps to keep the Wei Qi moving and circulating so that no matter where a pathogen invades, that defense, the Wei Qi is there and it's there to fight off path pathogens. So it circulates the Wei Qi, it moves the Qi anywhere in the body, and large intestine four is also a great point for anything affecting 
the head and the face and the sensory orifices. And pathogens will invade through the nose and the mouth and the eyes. So um, large intestine four helps to really um, build up our defenses in those areas where we're most vulnerable to an attack from something on the outside. So really important point, large intestine four. Okay, so that's one point for the Wei Qi. Another point that we're gonna do is San Zhao five. And the way that San Zhao five is located, you're gonna, you're gonna find this point with your palm facing your chest. The San Zhao channel runs here between the radius and the ulna, between your two, the two bones of your forearms. And there's kind of a trough there in between those two bones. And that's where the San Zhao channel goes uh, and flows. Um, and that it's easiest to find with your palm facing your chest as opposed to palm down. So palm facing your chest, you're gonna measure from the crease of your wrist, the width of about three of your fingers. Um, and that's gonna be where San Zhao 5 is located. Now, once you kind of find where the point is located, again, with acupressure, we're gonna feel around for what's tender. So on you, the tender spot might be a little more towards your elbow. It might be a little more towards your wrist. Um, you wanna feel for how your body responds and where these points are tender. And we can do this on both sides because these points are bilateral. You can also just kind of take your finger and um, move it along the channel. Very often your finger will naturally fall into a depression at a point. So it's fun to kind of use your intuition and let your body guide you to where the points are located. Um, don't focus so much on trying to get the location precise and accurate. Um, feel for what's tender on you. So San Zhao 5 um, is what we call a confluent point. Um, and what this means is that it has a special function to open up what we call um, one of the eight extraordinary meridians. Now there are lots of meridians or channels on the body. Those, those terms, meridians and channels, it pretty much means the same thing. Um, there are many of them throughout the body. What we tend to focus on mostly with acupuncture and acupressure are what we call the, um, the 12 primary channels. Um, so like the large intestine channel is a primary channel, so is the San Zhao channel. Um, and then we also have this very special set of meridians called the eight extraordinary meridians. And these meridians really um, function to work at a deep level on the body to affect change. And each of these eight extra meridians has what's called a confluent point. So this is a point that sort of activates this meridian. So San Zhao 5 activates what we call the Yang Wei Meridian. And the Yang Wei Meridian governs all of the Yang channels and it governs the exterior of the body. So the Yang Wei Meridian has a lot to do with Wei Qi or our defensive Qi. So when we stimulate San Zhao 5, we're stimulating the Yang Wei Meridian and we're stimulating our Wei Qi or our defensive Qi to circulate. So really important point for the immune system. It strengthens the Wei Qi, it circulates the Wei Qi, and it strengthens our exterior, our, our armor against the outside world. All right, so that's San Zhao 5. So we've got lung one and two to um, assist the lungs in their function of fighting off pathogens and descending and dispersing qi. We've got large intestine four and San Zhao five, which are the points that are going to circulate Wei Qi and strengthen our defenses against the outside. Now we need to work internally because that's really only part of the immune system. And the other part of the immune system comes from our, um, our internal working. So everything's gotta be balanced out internally for our immune system to really work at its best. And in traditional Chinese medicine, we call that the yin qi. And it's really all about our digestive function and our gut. And we know from modern research that so much of our immune system is contained in our gut and in the microbiome 
of our gut. So that has to be healthy in order to have a healthy immune system. So we're gonna work on that with a really important point called stomach 36. So I'm gonna move my chair. Show you stomach 36. So stomach 36 is located on the lower leg. So the stomach meridian starts on the face and goes all the way to the toes. And on the lower leg, it is gonna be on the lateral side of the tibia. So the tibia is your big bone here um, in the, uh, on your lower leg. And stomach 36 is going to be, I mean, so well, the whole stomach channel is gonna be on the outside of this tibia, so on the lateral side. So don't go inside, those are, those are other channels. We'll talk about those another time. We're gonna talk about the stomach channel and it is approximately one finger width um, from the tibia. So here's the tibia, here's the stomach channel. Tibia, stomach channel, and it goes all the way down. So stomach 36 is located up here at the top. So there's a couple ways to find this. You can either measure from this depression at the bottom of your knee. So you've got your kneecap and then you've got um, two um, depressions below the kneecap. We call that the calf's nose in Chinese medicine for obvious reasons. You can, on this, on this outer nostril of the calf's nose right here, measure with about four fingers. And uh, where that ends is about where stomach 36 is. Okay. You can also follow, find stomach 36 by following the tibia and as it flares out, as it gets to the top, it flares out. And stomach 36 is sort of in this depression as it starts to flare out. And again, um, use your intuition and let your body tell you. There's the textbook definition of the point and then there's where the point is located on you. So feel around for a tender spot. Stomach 36 has a pretty big area of influence. So if you find a tender spot in that general area, then you're on stomach 36. Um, the Chinese name for stomach 36 is Zhu San Li, which means leg three miles. So uh, the thinking is that if you stimulate this point, it's gonna give you the strength and the energy to go for another three miles. So stomach 36, um, I like to rub in circles. And again, we're gonna do this on both sides because these points are all bilateral. So um, you can just kind of alternate sides. You could do both sides at once if you like. That's totally fine too. Um, that's the advantage of points on the lower legs is that we can do both at once. So stomach 36 is the strongest tonification point on the body. So um, it strengthens really all aspects of the body and especially the digestive system. And um, it strengthens the yin qi, which powers our immune system internally. Um, stomach 36 is very often tender. If it's tender on you, you're normal. Um, it's tender on just about everyone when you find the right spot. Um, so just take a minute to rub it in some circles. So it strengthens the spleen and stomach and it regulates the spleen and stomach. Um, the spleen and stomach in traditional Chinese medicine are also related to blood and they are said to make the blood. And of course the blood circulates our immune system through the white blood cells. So there's a lot of connections between our modern understanding of the immune system and then um, the spleen and the stomach and um, the yin qi in the traditional Chinese medicine understanding of the immune system. A lot, of, um, a lot of overlap there. It's really difficult to overstate the importance of stomach 36, one of the most frequently used acupuncture points. One of the classic textbooks of traditional Chinese medicine even says that with stomach 36, all diseases can be treated. So, we do it all the time in the clinic when we're doing acupuncture. And it's a great point for acupressure as well. Um, you can do this through your clothes. So if you're wearing tights or whatever, it's fine to do it through your clothes. I just wanted to show you on 
my legs so you can get a good idea of where this point is located. So, stomach 36. All right. So, those are our points for the immune system. Just to review one more time, we've got lung one and two here, still red from where I was rubbing earlier, lung one and two to um, assist the lungs in their function. We've got large intestine four and Sanjiao five, which is gonna help to circulate the Wei Qi. And then we've got stomach 36 here on the lower leg, which is gonna strengthen the spleen and stomach. And those are our points for the immune system. Um, like I said, autumn is related to the lungs in traditional Chinese medicine. So this is a great time of year to do daily acupressure on yourself. You don't have to spend uh, 20 or 30 minutes, even just a few minutes is a big help. Um, and it helps to uh, just have you be more in touch with, with what's going on in your own body, which is always a good thing. So we're gonna take a few minutes now and just take a few breaths like we did in the beginning and just feel if anything has changed for you or feels different, you can, um, you can close your eyes or open your eyes, whatever's comfortable. M miss you too, Mitchell. Thank you for joining. It's good to see you here. All right. I'm going to take some breaths and while we're doing that, just tune into what's happening and see if you can feel any changes. You might notice some tingling at the uh, sites of the points that we were um, stimulating. That's good, that means it's still working. It's still doing its job even after you're done pressing on those points. The effects of an acupressure session last far longer than just the length of the session. Same with acupuncture too. So you might notice some tingling there. I am definitely at stomach 36. A lot of tingling there. See if anything's changed from what you felt earlier. I still have a little bit of tension up in here, but not as much. Probably stimulating those lung points really helped. Just take a couple more breaths. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today for Acupressure Wednesday. We'll be back again next week. If you have questions or you want to see us cover a specific topic, just let us know. Hope everybody stays safe out there and has a great day. And we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.